Hello and welcome to the 12th tutorial in the Cocos 2DX Flappy Bird C++ series and in this part we're going to be looking at scoring points. We'll be using the source code as usual from the previous part so if you don't have it don't worry there'll be a link in the description to the source code. We essentially have a basic working game without any scoring system. Our scoring system will just be like Flappy Bird in that when the bird or circle in our game passes in between the pipes the player gets a point which is added onto their score. Firstly we will create a hash define in the definitions header for the score collision bitmap. So if we go to a definitions header, we can copy and paste this and we'll change obstacle to point. Let's make this unique by changing the two to a three at the end. Now let's create an empty node and a body to attach to it. And we'll be doing this in the pipe.cpp because it'll be rendered with the pipe. So what we're going to do is auto point node equals, the reason we're just doing an empty node, not a sprite or anything, because we're not going to be seeing this node, we're just going to be using it to detect if the player has passed through the pipes. And now we're going to create a body, so our physics body, so point body equals physics body, colon colon create, and we're going to use the create box function, and for the size we're going to specify size. And the width we're just going to have as one, we want the minimum width. We're going to do sprite, colon, colon, create. And what we're, what we're going to do here is we're going to get the height of the ball or the player or whatever it is. Get content size dot height. And what we're going to do is time that by the pipe gap. And as if, if you remember, we had a pipe gap in the definitions header, which at the moment is set to 10, which just basically means the gap between the pipes is 10 times the height of the bird or the player or whatever you want to call it. And let's set up the body so it is a dynamic like the pipes, assign the collision bit mass and set the contact test bit mass to true so collision can be detected. So point body. Set dynamic to false point body. Set collision bit mass. One thing I do want to mention, though we're doing this in a very particular way, there's no right or wrong way as long as the result is what you intend it to be. So experiment with the code. Try you try and do things differently. You may want to use gravity more or actually we're not using gravity at all, the built-in system. You might want to use it and you may be able to make it better by using it, more efficient. So experiment with it. There's no like I said, no really wrong and right way. There are better ways though. So just again just experiment. Okay the physics body is now set up and can be attached to the point node and mm. the point node will be positioned in between the pipes mm. and added as a chart to the layer. So point node set physics body and for this we're just going to specify the point body then we're going to do point node set position I like doing the other one where you do point but that's just personal preference again it's whatever you feel comfortable with and for this for the position we're going to do top pipe get position x and then for y we're going to do top pipe get position y minus we're going to do top pipe get content size dot height divided by two so now this position is at the moment uh, in the y-axis just literally at the bottom of the top pipe aka the middle part of the point node but we want the top part of the point node so what we need to do is minus and in here we're going to be doing quite complex but if you just bear with me bright column column create we're going to do that thing that we just did before so Board.png and then in here get content size dot height time by pipe gap but we're just gonna divide this by two because we only want 
half of it positioned down because if we have the entire thing positioned down it won't be directly in between the pipes and now what we're going to do is actually add the other child to the layer so layer add child i'm going to do point node final thing to do uh, final thing to add in the pipe class is the action to move the point node similar to the pipe action so auto point node action equals move by column column create and this is actually going to be the exact same as this so we can we can literally just copy and paste it no point taking the risk of making a mistake and what we're going to do now is point node run action uh, point node action and now if we run this it was actually I want to stop running it and I want to run it in an iPad run one thing I found out yesterday, I didn't know you could even do this, that on Xcode when you pop up your simulator for now, because I'm recording in 720, uh, up to now I've been using the old iPhone simulator, aka the 3.5 inch non-retina. I found that they can scale it, so um, this is, I'm using an iPad, but I'm scaling it down to 50%, which is great, uh, because on the older iPad or the like the lowest device simulator, it was really laggy, whereas on this, it's not that laggy, and you can play it a little better. So, you got our iPad moving up and down, and there we go. That is, right there, is the scoring section that we created, and I just died. Okay, so... The next thing to do is we're going to create a score integer variable in the game scene header and initialize it to zero. So game scene right here. We're going to do unsigned end because we know it's not going to go uh, below zero. But you may want some sort of different scoring system. Again, you'll have to customize it to your game. And we're going to just going to sign this. We're going to sign it here. So score equals zero. Last part of this tutorial is to add the collision check condition and increment the score. Uh, plus for the purpose of this tutorial we will just print out the score when the player hits an obstacle and dies but we will eventually implement the score in the game overseen in the next few tutorials. So uh, in the on contact begin right here we're going to do else if and what we can do to make it easier we can copy and paste this but the only one thing that we're going to change the literally the only thing we're going to change is instead of obstacle we're going to have point point change this to point and in here first of all we're going to just going to do a cc log and i'm going to put point scored then we need to increment the score so score plus plus and in here when we actually die all we're going to do is cc log and for this we're going to do score so you can see the total score that the player has obtained throughout the course of the game and we'll specify the score variable so now if we run this the plan is we can go in between the pipes, earn points, and when we do earn a point, score or, or a log will appear in here that says score, and when you die, your total score will be displayed in here. So click play. Point scored. I'm going to make it, yay. Okay, so I'll make this one as well. And I'm just going to die now on purpose. Now, as you can see, it scored four. Um, so, yeah, that is it, really. The, the reason it 
did too because it tried to switch the scene twice it collided up I believe with the pipe and the ground but that's not much of an issue that is it for this tutorial in the next part of this series we're going to be looking at implementing the game over scene if you have any questions feel free to message us at support at sonarsystems.co.uk the email will be in the description you can comment on this video or just directly message us via YouTube or the required links for source code will also be in the description and as usual thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day Thank <laughs> you.